The boy, I guess, is, you know, serious about his sports. Um, Puffy is said to be a helicopter dad, you know, shows up and, you know, you know, you know what hel helicopter parenting is. Anyway, a helicopter dad. So apparently um, the team had practice early in the morning and Justin had missed quite a few practices and then he wasn't performing uh, suitable to whoever's watching over the team. I guess they would call that the coach. <laughs> We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say. As federal agents combed through Diddy's Miami Beach mansion, they encountered a scene devoid of life, with the property appearing eerily uninhabited. Electronics were confiscated and several of Diddy's staff members underwent questioning, only to be released later. Attorney Aaron Dyer, representing Diddy, vehemently condemned the raid as an excessive use of force, emphasizing that Diddy cooperated fully with authorities and was never detained. Dyer's statements hint at a brewing legal battle, portraying Diddy as an innocent victim of baseless accusations. As the media frenzy surrounding the raid subsided, life on Star Island gradually resumed its normal pace, albeit with lingering questions and speculation swirling around the moguls. You're not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. But I'm not scared of being the competition. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, and see if that factors in. I guarantee you it won't. All of these shortcut takers, they'd cancel me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my p in front of all my people at my agency. I told him no, what y'all do? And this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian, but in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I'm not taking the shortcuts. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. Joining me very quickly, and I wanna circle back to you, Kiela, about uh, Sean Puffy Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, spinning, spinning, spinning. I mean, this guy is a master promoter, okay? And the allegation is that Combs aided and abetted his son. LeBron James comments on P. Diddy getting arrested and basically saying that he had a weird feeling today was the day the feds will actually catch up. To Diddy. I guess we can all confirm that LeBron James was the anonymous tipster that gave him. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna keep it a glass of water, y'all. This is nasty work. Y'all remember before a couple months ago that we saw that LeBron James was saying, Ain't no party like a Diddy party. <laughs> Some people will say that LeBron James should go to jail. Chill out, y'all. Hey, we all know that this is a troll post. Well, it is actually true that PJ did go to jail, though. But you know what I mean, about LeBron James' whole situation is crazy, and that's that's lies. But it's still funny just to see that. <laughs> Feel me? Um, y'all, let me know how y'all feel about the whole P. Diddy situation and LeBron James. Diddy getting arrested and basically saying that he had a weird feeling today was the day the feds will actually catch up to Diddy. I guess we can all confirm that LeBron James was the anonymous tipster that gave him. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna keep it a glass of water, y'all. This is Y'all remember before a couple months ago that we saw that LeBron James was saying, ain't no party like a Diddy party. <laughs> Some people will say that LeBron James should go to jail. Chill out, y'all. Hey, we all know that this is a troll post. Well, it is actually true that PJ did go to jail, though. But not me. About LeBron James' whole situation is crazy, and that's that's lies. But it's still funny just to see that. <laughs> Feel me? Um, y'all let me know how y'all feel about the whole PJ situation and LeBron James. Today and another Diddy update. His former artist, Shine, is speaking out, claiming that Diddy ruined his life. Sent me to So that is the context by which you must always describe that relationship. Yes, I forgave. I moved on. But let us not pretend as if I was in Miami for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, I and I spent a birthday with him once. I went, I, saw to, I went again to do a charity event for impoverished youth uh, in London. Um, so 
Let us not lose sight of what the cold hard facts are. This was not someone uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship of brotherhood. This is someone who destroyed my life and who I forgave and who I moved on and for the better interest of Belize uh, because he was. What are you doing? Just having a little drink before my car picks me up. Where are you going? I'm gonna go to join um, Diddy. He's doing that. Rick Ross is doing a little concert this afternoon. Really? Your boobs, honestly, they get bigger. You know, I just lifted this bra up. It's like night and day. I need to have my bras. My particular experience with Beam Centauri, it was great in the beginning. It's great for us to work for them. It is not so cool when you start to own things. You see what I'm saying? So I made a lot of money with them too. Like, there's a point. They, they did a deal that mirrored what Puffy's deal with Diageo was for Syrah. So he didn't have ownership of that at any point, but he was getting a lot of money, like almost like $60 million a year at one point. So you see him go to Daily on is when you see him have some issues. And these people have really strong relationships. Don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case faster because he's making that them uncomfortable. That's a big part of it. The spirits business is it's not governed. They got a discus board that they created, right? If you got two companies that are $3 billion a year and Beam Centauria and Diageo, the, the distribution level is very hard for you to get things to a point where you can do the numbers, the right numbers. They incentivize the sales force by giving them box bonuses. And then when you sell a product, you get the bonuses off the boxes that's there. But you make that no matter what product you're selling. So if, if you sell Hennessy or Remy out the gate, they start to put downward pressure on the new companies. So check this out, yo. Um, Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. No, check this out, no homo, no homo, come here, man. Hey, yo, Kevin, come here, no homo, we're gonna have a contest. You know we're gonna have a contest, we're gonna get our breath first, because your breath is stinking sometimes. And we're gonna go back and forth. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, you know, first of all, make, make sure my mic is on. Uh, before, before I begin to, to trash him, Diddy, you know, I'm gonna acknowledge him on a special day. I bought the album, you know what I'm saying? So you bought I, didn't the ask, album. I didn't ask you for nothing. No, you didn't. I didn't ask you for nothing free. Yes, yes. I downloaded it. I didn't you, go to the store because I'm lazy. I thought you said you bought it. it. You ain't say you downloaded it. Get your download, story right. Download you download starting to act different, huh? You, no, you, no, ain't, no. you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, biz, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But. You, you never really got my number, so. Correct. Right. Okay. My number? Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Tell you my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I've been to a couple Diddy parties. Now, I'm risking a lot by saying this. I've been to lots of parties. I've been to Jamie Foxx. I've been with Snoop, T.I. Like, I've been to lots of places. What I will say is that one particular party, um, lots of big names, um, there was an artist there who said, hey, Lecrae, around 1 a.m., make sure you're not here. And I was like, what? You just don't want to be here at 1 in the morning. And I was like, now, my pride kicked in, like, yo, you don't know me. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can handle myself. Like, I'm not some little church boy who ain't never seen nothing. Like, I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what you talking about? Well, it's probably 12, 30. I'm downstairs. Um, I go downstairs to the studio. I come up out the studio. And I'm headed back upstairs to like the main area where everyone's kind of congregating and hanging out. And uh, the music changed. It was like really hard and heavy at first. And then, you know, like jamming, dancing music. And it was a little softer, you know, it was a little more sensual when I came out the studio and started going upstairs. And on my way upstairs, there's like this couch. And on the couch, I saw a couple of guys really going at it hard and heavy and um man and i was like oh 
you know, I, I, you know, my brain, I'm thinking, well, you know, the celebrity party, people do what they do. As I started moving up stairs, I passed them up and I noticed that it wasn't just those two guys. It was more and more people just going at it. I was like, OK, it's time for me to roll. I'm going to grab my stuff and I'm going to get up out of here. I did not know that's how this went down. So was that shocking? Absolutely. Was I forced or coerced into anything? I was not. Um, but I, why they felt that comfortable? I don't know. Maybe the invite list, they was like, yeah, all these people. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm shocked. Homes with conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs threatened and coerced victims to fulfill his desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, robbery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances, male commercial workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs has been arrested in a Manhattan hotel this evening after a grand jury indicted the music mogul. Combs had been living there for several weeks. A person with knowledge of the investigation told NBC News the arrest was based on a sealed indictment brought by the Southern District of New York. His attorney tells CNN that he is currently being processed. The charges are unclear as of this moment. Z. We were actually the first ones here just all unfolded Sandra I would say less than 10 minutes ago on scene here that we're getting this information from we were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least there are three Bearcats on scene here this just all unfolded Sandra I would say less than 10 minutes ago we got here even before the crime scene tape came up so uh we're just down the hill if you look up the street where tony is right now to the right you'll see one of those bear cats and law enforcement on the other side of those bushes basically is that home that is registered to bad boy films which is part of bad boy entertainment and the home in particular is registered not only to bad boy films but to one of p diddy's daughter what happens here is that the feds the federal government started a case with him apparently the search warrant that had his houses in Miami and LA was pre-planned already. They knew they were going to do that. So they have a much bigger case. They're going to be talking to a lot of people about certain criminal acts that he might have committed and then go from there. And what about the videos? Well, they're going to sift through those videos. They're going to look at them and then see if there's any criminality on those videos and then they'll, they'll go from there. The house of cards might fall for Diddy right now. It's not looking that great. Uh, right now, I know that uh, his, he has higher powered attorneys, and right. uh, with all these allegations that are coming out against him and against other people, a lot of people are starting to be very nervous about what's going on. He was like, it's power, see? I can make a man, he said, if I can make a man suck my, I can make people do anything. They are heavily armed, and uh, they've been very tactful, would probably be the best word to use as they uh, made entry into this home uh, this afternoon. We actually watched them as they made through their made their way through one of these uh, side gates, and as soon as they got inside the home, one of the things, the first things they did was made their way into this garage that you see is open right there. Now, they did take a couple people into custody. We witnessed that. Now, are they under arrest? Are they just being uh, asked about? what they know that I can't answer but I can tell you there's three people right there that were taken into custody were, were inside that home at the time of the wreck uh, cuz P Diddy be wanting the body and you got to tell him no oh, you Lord. got to tell him no Diddy didn't turned over tapes allegedly with the Carters is some freak out and the Beyonce how on the cocaine
This is incredibly disturbing footage, so I do want to warn our viewers as you did. But as you said, Cassie's lawsuit, which was filed in November of 2023 and then was quickly settled overnight, it did open the floodgates. But in that complaint, Jake, she details an incident that she alleged happened in March of 2016 at a hotel in Los Angeles, physically assaulted by Diddy. Now our team in the LA Bureau, we have got our hands on that surveillance footage, and it appears to corroborate Cassie's claims identically. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement at least there are three bear cats on scene here this just all in several a-list celebrities drawing comparisons to infamous cases like jeffrey epstein if he has a lot of parties and people going through his house i heard yeah. he was hip-hop epstein <laughs> i heard what he did well, hip-hop epstein yeah party. like I you had it. you had these parties and then yeah. it's a normal party and then you start going into different rooms and you start opening these doors and you go there's a door that you wish you never saw you heard about the p diddy scandal the P. Diddy lawsuit, Puff Daddy, whatever you're calling him. And if you haven't heard about it, plus later on in the show, I'm going to demonstrate mental illness for you in the form of a response that I got on Twitter. Why? Because the media and Hollywood are clearly trying to bury it. That is why. But don't worry, we are going to discuss it. I always thought that they were conspiracies because they sounded crazy. First and foremost, rumors that he was gay. And also that he had something to do with the killing of Tupac. Well, last year, things got interesting because Combs's ex, also rumors that he was behind the killing of his quote unquote best friend, the notorious B.I.G. Her name was Cassandra. She went by Cassie and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her. New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years. So she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the... But this one felt a little different because we're like, okay, but she's known you for a very long time. And these allegations are quite weird. And then even more women started coming out saying they were victims of Diddy. And then it seemed like an avalanche and he issued a very strong statement condemning them. But we never got a follow up there because then he very quickly settled with her for an undisclosed amount for essentially extortion attempts and trying to murky his name. So, again, you don't know what's real. You don't know what's not. A man named Rodney Jones has come forward to sue Diddy. And this is not your average lawsuit. I will say right now, many law as a producer and he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney also goes by Lil Rod for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70 page lawsuit that has been filed and he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry and is alleging that he told, he went forward and told Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Karam, about that. Right. No, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand it. Uh huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Lil Kim, Craig Mack. All know, these people all are hanging these, around. All, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary okay? J. Blosh, they ain't know nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? $50 million four times. 
four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you my. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Oh, See, I got the rest. I'll be back to you if J.D. ain't had enough. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of the <laughs> You ask me, baby. Jermaine Dupree, small as a child. It's worse. Uh oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Mm hmm. Just be been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 years. You heard about him catching the sexual on the little designer dude? Yeah. Right. Him, imagine you got two seven foot tall swole guys in dresses, cornering you in a hotel in a bedroom. You finna be scared. Fact. So like, I, I distinctly remember going to a Diddy party, all the waitresses just topping. It's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors, yeah. I don't know that there's any proof or anything other than that. The thing is, like, we're getting the rumors from the internet, right. and the, the internet thinks that the Taliban took out that bridge in Baltimore. So it's like. People who own the labels own the prisons. Literally the same people? Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. The records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. But they didn't make you write those lyrics. It's not about making somebody write the lyrics. It's about being there as guardrails to make sure certain songs make it through and certain songs don't. Some records are made by committee, you, meaning record company guys sit around and tell the artists, this is hot, say that, do this. We're gonna have this guy write the lyrics. We're gonna have that. You have, you know, the record company pushing the narrative. You know, some social engineering going on here to make sure those. In recent times, Sean Diddy Combs has found himself at the center of numerous controversies and legal battles, facing serious allegations ranging from physical abuse to involvement in criminal activities. The FBI's investigation and police raids at his properties have only intensified the scrutiny surrounding him. Who killed Tupac and Biggie? You know, I think both of these dudes were assassinated in some kind of way. More Biggie than Tupac. I think Tupac might uh, got killed by a dude that they, that they, you know, had an incident with earlier that day. But Biggie's just seems a little JFK. governmental to me. <laughs> Puff have been involved in Tupac's murder or Becky's murder? I think that when you set up an atmosphere for something to happen, how involved are you? You set up the atmosphere. You put people in positions to get hurt. He knew that somebody was gonna do something. He was told, I told him before we left. I told him, Mace told him. See, people ain't telling, see, everybody think that Gene Deal is the only one know this shit. I'm not the only one that's noticed and privileged to this information. 
I'm the only one that's speaking on it. You being a part of Bad Boy at one point, how do you feel about these lawsuits accusing Diddy of abuse? What do you think about that? You knowing Diddy, do you think he's capable of doing that, man? It's in his character. That's who he is. That's what comes with power. That's what comes with arrogance. That's that's what comes with, you know, what makes him. Once you have a sign of doing it over and over and over again, that's when it becomes a problem. You'd be like, so every relationship that you get in, you have, you're violent in them? So you say, you know, I don't have to wait to see what he would, you know, I was around when, 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 when Cassie was there. I knew Kim Porter before uh, I knew Puff. Um, I met Misa, but you know, it was a history. When you have a history of the same thing, man, it, it becomes a problem. Something you, you, you do once or twice, you get over, you don't, you, first you're not supposed to put your hands on a woman's way I was raised. And the only person that really put their hands on women really is people who have men who have feminine traits. So, you know, it really takes a coward to put his hands on a woman. Some of you may not have realized um, that I'm not part of the club. And a lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of their fucking club. That pisses them off. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are and they definitely know who they are. Um, a lot of people would be like, what, who, who, who? Come on, man, stop playing. The other freedom I see in the album is just a freedom for couples who have gone through something. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's almost a cliche, you know, the celebrity couple, you know, they get together, they break up, you know, like, well, who else are they gonna go out with? But for some reason, you took an unprecedented stand to fight for this marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, to fight for it mm -hmm. and to put it all out there. What is it about this marriage that's so special that you would fight this hard to, to save it? Well, it's my soulmate, it's the person I love, you know, and you, and you, you can be in love with someone, you can love someone and you not, and if you haven't experienced love and you don't understand it and you don't have the tools to move forward, then you're gonna have complications, period. And if you, you can either address it or you can pretend until it blows up at some point. And, you know, for us, we chose to for, fight for our love for our family to give our kids a different outcome. You see, see, uh, you know, to break that that cycle. Um, for black men and women, you know, just to see a different outcome. Like you were saying, it's not this celebrity couple. We, we were never a celebrity couple. We were a couple who just happened. I looked at him like, what the, f what the, what you just say? <laughs> Let yeah. me move, man, before I do something. You gonna make me mess up the wedding. When you, I'm telling you, yes, I'm, I'm telling you, look, look, <laughs> later you gonna find out a little shit that oh, I be saying. Man. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Dude. Man, listen, I'm trying to tell you the truth, but Yo. the truth sometimes it hurts. Right. It hurts people and they don't want to hear that shit, but uh, I'm trying to tell you. Now, nigga asked me, could he take me shopping? And it fucked me up because I'm looking like, what the fuck did this nigga just say? Take you shot. <laughs> I got a bankroll out of this motherfucker. I want to take you shot. Why? Because when you walk around looking so motherfucking good, I want to feel like, God damn it, that motherfucker with me. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. But when a nigga tell me he want to take me shopping, what the fuck is the matter with this nigga? Hold on. Where was this at? This was at the wedding. Oh, no. right we going to get to it. What did Puff do to piss you the fuck off? How did he do you dirty if he did you dirty? And what is and what is doing dirty if a motherfucker put you on? Mm. That's really good. Let me take my shades off. Now, I can say this because it's not something I didn't say to him. How, how do I want to say this? Me and Puff was like, I felt like I did more than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Um, Because you said felt. like Okay, feeling. let's clear that up then. You saying you feeling that. No, we're going to keep it. We, 
I'm because I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So the disdain that I got for Puff is more like you trying to keep me here. I'm not here. All my peers is up here. All my peers are bosses. When it's time, just like somebody raised somebody up, you know they did work with you. They go from your little man to maybe A and R to something else. He just kept trying to keep me right here, like like he didn't want me to grow at anything. Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party. So yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. And Ross, we say good buddies. Okay, they 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 get who both Diddy and Ross and Kevin. They all gay. Okay? DJ Khaled, Rick Ross, and he did it. Yeah. They all gay? Yeah. Gotcha. They asked me about Puff, and I, I answered it as honestly as I knew how to answer it. I know these people, they're not just public figures trying to find the high frequency. In knowing the story, knowing the right thing to talk about, I was like, this is a someone who was hurt, who was victimized. Podcast, man, and I, and I probably should, oh, wow. <laughs> See what I'm saying? He put on her socks. Why would he do that? Because it's a power thing. It's grippy. By the way, it's grippy, bro. Yo, <laughs> drugs like a motherfucker. Yes. Gotta be. That's, that's clear. And she said he was intoxicated as shit, but you are Sean P. Diddy Combs. Yeah. And you're in the Intercontinental Hotel and you run out in a towel. This was 2016, yeah, is it, or 18? Yeah, 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 yeah. This guy was 46 years old. Prince Harry was hanging with Diddy. I mean, everybody hung with Diddy. That's the other tricky yeah, thing. Like, Diddy hung out with that. everybody. And I've spoken to a bunch of people who are like, yo, great dude, like, always there for you, never asked for a single thing. To one in the morning. And then, the then freak off Everybody begins. says, get out of the house. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like the gremlins start eating after <laughs> midnight. <laughs> Everybody who tells the story is like, I saw I go upstairs and these dudes are fucking yeah. like right on the couch. Yeah. And then I go in this room and these guys are fucking and it's yeah. like And pros. Like apparently he was getting male. Yeah, that's the that was one of the rumors, like the male freak off. So he would hire the professional dicks to have sex with the girls. And I think he would watch allegedly. That's that's what was alleged, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of But you may snow what's up. Sean Diddy Combs, the well-known music and business mogul, was recently arrested in Manhattan. This arrest comes after a grand jury indictment, but we don't yet know the exact charges against him. The arrest has sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and beyond. Mark Agnifilo, Combs' lawyer, has publicly expressed his disappointment and frustration with the situation. He says the legal actions taken against Combs are unfair and unjust. Agnifilo paints Combs as more than just a successful entrepreneur. He says Combs is also a devoted father and philanthropist who has spent 30 years building his empire while giving back to the black community. Agnifilo says Combs isn't perfect, but he's convinced he's not a criminal. Agnifilo says Combs has been completely cooperative throughout the investigation. He even made the proactive decision to relocate to New York in anticipation of facing these charges. Agnifilo has asked the public to wait and see what happens before making up their minds. He says Combs is eager to clear his name and prove his innocence. Darman Williams, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, also had something to say about Combs' arrest. Williams said that federal agents arrested Combs based on a sealed indictment. He also said that we'll get more info about the case once the indictment is unsealed, which will give us a better understanding of the charges. Combs has been dealing with a series of legal issues recently. He's currently facing multiple federal investigations and lawsuits, with serious allegations including sexual assault. On September 10th, former Danity Kane member Dawn Richard filed a lawsuit against Combs. In her lawsuit, Richard accuses Combs of causing her verbal and emotional distress. This lawsuit adds to the growing list of legal issues Combs is confronting. Earlier this year, a video from 2016 came to light, showing Combs physically assaulting Cassie Ventura, who was his girlfriend at the time. This disturbing footage backs up the claims made in the lawsuit Ventura filed in November 2023. 
The lawsuit outlines a concerning incident that occurred in Los Angeles. Just one day after the lawsuit was filed, the two parties came to an agreement. Combs posted on Instagram to say he was sorry and take responsibility for his actions in the video. He said, I have no excuses for what I did in that video, it's pretty gross. I've been in therapy and working every day to improve myself. Since Ventura filed the lawsuit, other women have come forward with similar allegations against Combs. Joy Dickerson Neal filed a lawsuit in November, claiming that Combs sexually assaulted her and distributed revenge pornography. On top of that, another lawsuit filed in December says that Combs and R&B singer Aaron Hall sexually assaulted a woman and her friends back in the early 1990s. Combs has strongly denied these allegations. In March, there was a big development when Homeland Security agents raided Combs' properties in Miami and Los Angeles. The raids were part of a big investigation into the sexual assault claims. The searches involved several law enforcement agencies and were confirmed to be part of the ongoing investigation. Combs' lawyer, Aaron Dyer, said the raids were an unnecessary show of force. Dyer said that Combs wasn't detained during the raids and has been fully cooperative with the authorities. He called the accusations against Combs a witch hunt and said that Combs is innocent. Dyer said that Combs is committed to fighting to clear his name in both the legal system and the court of public opinion. The situation is really grabbing people's attention and getting people talking about what it means for Combs's career and reputation. As the legal process continues, many are watching closely to see how the case develops and what impact it may have on Combs and the entertainment industry as a sexual abuse, trafficking, and misconduct. Podcast, man, and I, I, I probably should. Oh, wow. <laughs> see what I'm saying? He put on her socks. Why would he do that? Because it's a power thing. It's grippy. By the way, it's grippy, bro. Yo, stop. Drugs like a motherfucker. Yes. Got him. That's that's clear. And she said he was intoxicated as shit, but you are Sean P. Diddy Combs. Yeah. And you're in the Intercontinental Hotel and you run out in a towel. This was 2000, what, 16? Yeah. Is that right? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. Yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of the <laughs> You ask me, baby. You made the pre small as a child. It's worse. Uh oh. Oh man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Mm -hmm. Does he been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30 years? You heard about him catching the sexual the little designer dude yeah right him imagine you got two seven foot tall swole guys in dresses corner you in a hotel in a bedroom you finna be scared right so like i i distinctly remember going to a diddy party all the waitresses topping it's so difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life sometimes you got to do that I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it, I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Diddy was running some kind of Epstein type deal where he was filming everybody, right? That's the rumors, yeah. I don't know that there's any proof of anything other than that 
the thing is, like, we're getting the rumors from the internet, and the, the internet thinks that the Taliban took out that bridge in Baltimore. So it's like, who knows? Who knows what's real? Did he answer the phone? He the phone. Diddy has been in the news for all the wrong reasons recently. His bail was turned down after he was accused of trying to intimidate witnesses and offering to pay his victims rent in exchange for their silence. He's now facing some pretty serious charges, including trafficking and transporting individuals for prostitution, following a major indictment this week. Court documents from XXL say that Diddy's bail was denied because he reportedly offered financial support to keep his victims quiet, even pressuring them to lie about sexual assault claims. The 16-page indictment goes into detail about how one victim became financially dependent on him. Diddy not only covered her rent, but also offered her career opportunities in order to exert control over her. But it gets worse. After his ex Cassie sued him in November 2023, Diddy started contacting one of his victims a lot, saying he'd support her financially if she stayed loyal. After the police raided his homes in LA and Miami in March, he's thought to have contacted other witnesses to make sure they wouldn't testify against him. The case is coming apart at the seams, with more disturbing details coming to light. At Diddy's bond hearing on Tuesday, prosecutors presented a strong case, revealing that Diddy contacted former Diddy Dirty Money singer Kalena Harper over 100 times after she was named in a lawsuit filed by ex-bandmate Dawn Richard, who also accused him of abuse. This level of communication raised concerns about intimidation. His lawyer, Mark Agnafilo, suggested a $50 million bail package, but the judge said that no amount of money could protect witnesses given Diddy's alleged history of manipulation. The judge was worried that if he was released, it could lead to further interference. The feds arrested Diddy in New York after a six-month investigation, which included two major raids on his homes. He's been charged with a number of offences, including sex trafficking and racketeering, and pleaded not guilty on 17 September. His legal team tried to get the charges reduced, but Judge Magistrate Robin F. Tarnavsky said no to his bail request and kept Diddy in custody. If he's found guilty, Diddy could be looking at a lengthy prison sentence, which would be one of the most shocking cases in the entertainment industry. It's unclear what the future holds for him, and this case could overshadow other hip-hop legal battles like those of C Murder, Max B and BG, given its high profile and the severity of the accusations. Word is that Diddy is getting more aggressive as his legal issues pile up. He's supposedly telling those involved in his scandals that he'll expose their secrets unless they help him get through this crisis. If I were Jay-Z, I'd be reaching out to top lawyers, as Diddy seems ready to talk and isn't holding back. Diddy was arrested in New York on Monday night after Homeland Security conducted a raid at his hotel. During the raid, the authorities found a few disturbing items, but we don't have all the details yet. It's alleged that Diddy exploited people to the point of physical exhaustion, with some victims needing medical treatment. What's more, he's said to have kept videos of these encounters as leverage to ensure their silence. The authorities also reportedly found firearms and various electronic devices containing potentially damaging evidence, suggesting that Diddy's situation is getting worse with every revelation. These latest charges come from a raid on his properties earlier this year, which also led to the arrest of his sons, Justin and Christian. A lot of important evidence was taken at the time, and it's going to be crucial to the ongoing investigation. As the case develops, it's becoming increasingly clear that Diddy is facing some serious legal challenges. With each new discovery, the situation becomes more complex, making it challenging for him to navigate these mounting issues. After Diddy's arrest, a press conference revealed some pretty shocking new details including recordings of him and his team trying to bribe victims. They pressured these individuals to stay quiet or change their stories to protect him from legal consequences. The most serious allegations are that Diddy pressured people into taking part in disturbing activities, some of which are said to be linked to other high-profile celebrities. 
It's worth mentioning that Jay-Z's name has come up in this investigation. Despite being friends for a long time, with Diddy often calling Jay-Z his brother from another mother, it seems that Jay-Z is distancing himself from Diddy amid the growing allegations. This has led to speculation about his efforts to move away from their close relationship. There have been rumors about Jay-Z for years, with people like singer Jaguar Wright claiming he was involved in questionable actions, but there's no proof. These rumors have had a negative impact on his reputation. Another controversy surrounds Jay-Z's relationship with Foxy Brown, who was just 15 when she signed with Rockefeller Records. Speculation about a predatory relationship has been going on for years, but neither party has confirmed these claims. Dame Dash, who used to be Jay-Z's business partner, has been defensive when people have asked him about these rumours. He said there was some tension between him and Jay-Z, particularly regarding Aaliyah. He said that Jay-Z tried to get close to her, but she was more interested in him. On top of that, Jay-Z's collaboration with R. Kelly on their 2002 album The Best of Both Worlds caused a bit of a stir especially given the serious allegations against Kelly at the time. A lot of people said that Jay-Z was putting profit before principle, and now that Diddy is in trouble, people are looking at what Jay-Z did in the past in a new light. As more details come to light, it's still not clear how Diddy's legal issues are connected to Jay-Z's past. What is clear, though, is that this scandal is shaking the foundations of hip-hop's most powerful figures, Aaliyah's tragic death in 2001 rocked the music world and gave rise to a number of conspiracy theories. Many people thought that her plane crash was more than just an accident. They said that it might be part of a larger plan by powerful people in the industry. The strange things that happened right before she died, like the plane leaving too fast and the fact that it was overloaded, made people even more suspicious and they started to wonder if there was more to the story than what we were being told. Aside from Alia's case, there have been rumours for a long time about Jay-Z's alleged affair with Kathy White, who died in mysterious circumstances. The timing of her death and the lack of details have led some to believe there might be a connection to her rumoured relationship with Jay-Z. These theories gained ground when Kanye West, during one of his infamous outbursts, suggested that Jay-Z had powerful connections that could be used to silence people. Even though Kanye said he didn't want to cause trouble, his comments made people think more about how much influence Jay-Z has. On top of that, people have also been looking closely at Jay-Z's business dealings and his relationship with Beyoncé. They're regarded as one of the industry's most powerful couples, but rumours about Jay-Z's history of pursuing younger women have cast a shadow over their public image. As new allegations come to light, many are wondering if Diddy's legal issues might shine a light on more of Jay-Z's past. Given the serious charges facing Diddy, including sex trafficking and racketeering, many speculate he might cooperate with the authorities in hopes of a lighter sentence. If he strikes a plea deal, he could expose his former industry friends, including Jay-Z, which could have a huge impact on the music world. The idea of Diddy turning on someone he's called his brother could reveal long-hidden secrets and change the landscape of hip-hop forever. What are your thoughts on this? Could Jay-Z become involved in Diddy's legal difficulties? Is Diddy prepared to turn on his former friend to get a lighter sentence? Or will he face the music alone? If he decides to spill the beans, this scandal could get a lot worse. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's discuss where this situation might lead.